Hey everybody, welcome to the first in a series of mod spotlights. My name is Element5, and over the last year I've been streaming a lot of Darkest Dungeon with a heavy focus on modded content. And over the course of that year I've had many requests to do spotlights and overviews of my thoughts and how I play certain modded classes. So I was happy to finally indulge that and jump right in with one of my favorite modded classes, which is Muskreen's The Tusk. Now The Tusk is... Uh, one of my favorite modded classes for a lot of different reasons. We're looking right now at the legendary Bumble Toad, a legendary tusk that I believe we took to the end game and delivered the killing blow in our first playthrough of Darkest Dungeon, named after a tremendous member of our community and one of my channel mods. In particular, I love the tusk partly because she's just so metal. I love that she is almost the literal embodiment of speak softly and carry a big stick. She is out there to do damage, to wreak havoc, uh, her utility, her damage output, she's just all in all a lot of fun. And as with most of Muscarine's classes, she requires a little bit of management, for the, but for the most part is well thought out, well balanced, uh, has an interesting backstory which ties into the Darkest Dungeon. Uh, in the description, the Tusk is a semi-feral sociopath who lives for pride and boasting after all that was left to her was the satisfaction procured by vengeance. She didn't come here for redemption or salvation. She only followed her next big prize's trail to fill a wall of vanity. Like the bounty hunter, the tusk is a uh, crowd control and offensive hybrid with high damage potential, limited mobility, uh, but her kit offers a a lot of different specializations, so we're going to talk about that real quick. Again, this is going to be a brief overview, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. We'll go over her kit, her camping skills, and a little bit of how I use her. So my overall thought when thinking about and playing the Tusk is to take her with Mark Synergy and to play her a little bit like a bounty hunter. She's, for the most part, sort of immobile, but she capitalizes very heavily on Mark damage, she can shuffle things, she can stun things, and she can put out a tremendous amount of damage. So first up, let's take a look at her primary, one of her primary abilities in her kit, Big Game. Now, Big Game can be used in position two or three, and it only targets the first two positions. It does 75% damage versus marked, 35% damage versus size two, 15 accuracy versus size two, and comes with 18% armor piercing. This is where the Tusk hits hardest, okay? So as long as you can set up any mark synergy, have an occultist or a bounty hunter or an arbalist mark a target, uh, or she could mark it herself, and you throw this at a size 2 or larger enemy, thinking the Shambler, or the Swine Prince, or one of the larger brigands. She's going to hit that thing and hit it hard, and that is where a lot of fun with the Tusk is to be had. Oh! Next is her ability, Bite Me. Now, Bite Me is literally what it sounds like. She is literally taunting, sticking her tongue out at the enemy enraging the enemy, marking the target, buffing the enemy's damage 15%, but also buffing herself 25%. So there's a little bit of give and take here. You can do it from any position. So if she gets shuffled out of position, you can still set up a mark, you can still buff her own, her own damage if you need to. Uh, but the bigger takeaway is not only does this synergize with her own and set up her own damage when using big game, but it also synergizes very well with other mark classes like a bounty hunter or arbalist, etc. Eradicated. So next in the list is Mastodon. Now Mastodon is one of her primary crowd control abilities. This is her stun, 130% chance to stun either position one or two, and she can only use this from position two or three. That is sort of where she is best utilized, is in about rank three in your group combo. Not only will Mastodon stun an enemy, it will clear stuns in your party, which has a lot of utility in certain fights as well as buff the move resist of herself and the entire party by 30%. It also debuffs her speed by minus 5, which is worth taking into consideration. This is a really, really powerful stun, and something that I have in any kit when I can take her almost all the time. A brilliant confluence of skill and purpose. Next in line is Ram. Now, Ram is also limited to being used in position two or three in the group. Will also only hit one of the two enemies in the front. Has a knockback 320% chance 
to knock back an enemy to the back line and shuffle the front line forward. 35% damage versus size 2, 15 accuracy versus size 2, and armor piercing 18. It also debuffs the enemy target by minus 40% move resist. This is a little bit similar to big game, except for it doesn't capitalize on the mark damage. Instead, it has the shuffle utility. This is one of her primary abilities to reach the back line, since for the most part she's limited to only hitting rank 1 or 2. So take her into the ruins with this, make sure you shuffle the back line forward with Ram, you'll have a good time. Next is a crowd favorite. Uh, her spit ability is essentially her repost, okay? So you activate spit from any position, and you can hit any position. It debuffs the enemy uh, for accuracy. So this can be really, really useful on enemies that have multiple turns, or enemies that hit very hard. Uh, but it's going to activate her repost. She debuffs herself for minus 30% damage when she reposts. Uh, but let me tell you, spit is one of those abilities that, say, when used against a group of brigands, where essentially every attack coming at you is AoE, thus reposts are their most useful, or against, say, Crimson Court bosses that have multiple turns, Spit will absolutely deliver. Next is her ability, Irascible. Now, Irascible is her self-heal, it's usable in any position, and you can only use it once per battle. So really think about when you're going to use it. Now, you could use it offensively and also take advantage of the self-buffs that come out of it. So at, at rank 3, Irascible will heal her for 12 HP. It'll also buff her damage by 18% and give her 3 speed at the cost of 10 accuracy. Accuracy is actually important for the Tusk. I'll talk about this in a second. But just note that... This ability makes her a lot more survivable, and you can get a little bit greedy with it and use it to buff her damage at the beginning of a fight. Really, really, really happy that she has this in her kit. There we go. Boy, do I love me Tusk. Last but not least is Trample. Now, Trample can only be used in rank 3 or 4. This is a means for her to hit the front line very, very hard. As you can see, it hits both rank 1 and 2 enemies. Uh, it moves her forward once, and it does 15% damage versus beast. So this is a really interesting ability because if she were to be shuffled into position 4, Trample is what will get her out of position 4, back into a very comfortable rank 3, but it will also add in a ton of damage to the front 2, extra damage versus beast. Trample is one of those abilities where if you don't have a prevent ambush, for example, or you're thinking you're getting your group is getting surprised a ton of the time and you're being shuffled out of position, or you happen to be going into the Warrens, for example, and you're going to be fighting beast enemies, Trample is amazing. It can do really good damage and it can just pull her right back into a position where she can be useful again. A decisive oh. Oh. Now, she has a ton of camping utility. Uh, filthy is for Prevent Nighttime Ambush. Okay? All companions get stressed out by six. This is nearly identical to the Occultist's Prevent Nighttime Ambush and super, super useful at a time cost three. Now, next is Uncaring. Uncaring also time cost three. Self only buff for 40% bleed resist and blight resist. Now, this is really useful if you think about applying it to the kind of damage you will see coming out of the cove, the kind of bleeds you see in the cove, or a boss like the thing from the stars in Color of Madness, which will hit for huge blights. To be able to just completely negate those damages is a tremendous part of her survivability. Now, Boast is uh, her primary scouting ability. Scouting, obviously, very powerful in Darkest Dungeon, even after it was slightly nerfed in Color of Madness. Self, only 10% chance party surprise, but 35% scouting chance. Typically, the scouting chance, so worthwhile, so valuable, it's worth the extra percentage chance that your party is surprised. Last but not least, Overconfidence. A time cost 2 for 25% damage buff at the cost of 10 accuracy. If you are going to be going into a boss fight that is a size 2 or larger enemy, as many are, whether it be the Shambler or the Swine Prince, etc., Overconfidence is a go-to. Adding 25% damage to a character that is going to crush the boss 
makes her crush it even harder, obviously. So a fantastic kit overall comes with the prevent amb ambush, comes with survivability, with scouting chance, with self buffs at the cost of accuracy. The way to think about gearing a tusk, therefore, is to think about giving her accuracy and crit and damage done. That is typically the way to do it. Make it make it so that when you get the mark synergies to work in your group and she's ready to just ram that tusk into a size two boss or larger, she hits as hard as she can. Uh, I believe we hit for a 76 crit, was one of our bigger crits against the uh, Sodden crew in the cove at one point. That was one of her highlights, though she's hit really, really hard in a lot of times with her abilities in general, because you have such an ability to buff her damage and to keep her survivable. Uh, again, this is one of my favorite uh, modded classes, probably my favorite of Muscarine's profligates. I just absolutely adore her style, her barks, her animations. I highly recommend you check this character out and give her a try. The way to think about playing her again is to play in groups with mark synergies, to play her a little bit like a bounty hunter, to take care to think about her immobility, that you want to position her in, in rank two or three in your group if you can. Remember that you're only basically going to be hitting the front two uh, with things like big game or ram or mastodon, etc. But should you need to be a little bit more defensive, you do have the survivability of irascible, the stuns of mastodon, and a decent level of disease resist, which makes her a little bit more convenient when interacting with certain curios or against certain bosses, enemies, and in certain situations. Of course, I'll have the link for this character in the description below the video, as well as the rest of Muscarine's Profligates classes. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. I hope that this brief overview has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Happy tusking, and we will see you next time.